the Financial Empowerment Conference uh, is a wonderful opportunity for me to be among people who share the passion for financial literacy, who understand that it has the ability to change lives and it can help the most vulnerable people in our communities. I attended the Calgary ABLE conference a couple of years ago and I learned so much that I asked my team uh, from the agency to come to this conference because we really need to understand what's happening within on the ground um, within the communities and so thank you for for accepting uh, those of us from federal government among you. Um, we are here to listen, we're here to learn, and uh, I'm really excited over to be here for the, the two days. There's amazing work that's going on, and conferences like this one offer a wonderful opportunity to learn about best practices and share new ideas. I'm really looking forward to hearing from Val and Liz about the TD Grant Fund, uh, the Financial Literacy Grant Fund. There will be lots for us to learn collectively um, and use in our work going forward. I'm also happy to be here to launch Financial Literacy Month. For the whole month of November, the spotlight is on the importance of financial literacy to the lives of each and every Canadian. And it's an opportunity to shine the spotlight on all the great services and resources that are out there in the communities all across Canada. November is a really busy month for all of us. I and my team will be crossing Canada to meet with different groups and organizations like yours people on the front line of financial literacy, people touching and helping the lives of all Canadians and helping them get the tools, the knowledge that they need to build a better financial uh, knowledge and skills. I'll also meet with different groups to explain the importance of financial literacy and tell them about the work of organizations like yours and why that matters. Because Financial Literacy Month is about celebrating the important work that you do. We have celebrated Financial Literacy Month for 60 months now, and what that means is a lot of hard work and some really significant accomplishments. Across Canada, we see some truly amazing programs that are helping make our communities more inclusive by helping people for whom every day is a challenge just to make ends meet. The theme of your conference, Aligning for Impact, suggests a work in progress, and that is accurate. We know that l improving lives through financial literacy takes time, but just looking around the room and seeing the energy and the commitment present here today, I can tell you we are having an impact. We're, m m momentum is building. What you do matters, and I really thank you for it, for it. The first Financial Literacy Month, as Pat mentioned, was launched in 2011 with the Financial Literacy Action Group. That includes Prosper Canada to raise awareness among Canadians and stakeholders about the importance of financial literacy in strengthening an individual's financial well-being. This, that first year, there were 75 organizations that had 200 events. In 2012, Parliament of Canada proclaimed each November as Financial Literacy Month. And since then, the momentum has been building as community organizations, volunteer groups, employers, private companies have become involved in Financial Literacy Month. And I'm really pleased to say that this year we have over 1,000 events in our calendar of events. As Canada's financial literacy leader, my job is about collaborating. It's about engaging Canadians. It's also about coordinating activities with organizations from the public, the private, and the nonprofit sector. People like you so that together we can strengthen the financial literacy of Canadians. To do my job, I count on the advice and the support of the National Steering Committee on Financial Literacy. The 15 members of the committee include Liz Mulholland from Prosper, Pat Foran, CTV News reporter, I saw Lori Campbell from Credit Canada Debt Solutions, and Andrew Nicholson from the New Brunswick Financial Consumer Commission. These folks are leaders and champions uh, for financial literacy all across their sectors. Thanks to the input from this committee, as well as consultations with the general public and organizations like you across the country, we developed the National Strategy for Financial Literacy, Count Me in Canada. The Financial Consumer Agency of Canada consulted widely to develop the strategy and heard some really important messages. So, what I heard was the need to focus on uh, common financial literacy concerns and challenges faced by Canadians. Financial literacy is a critical life skill. 
at every stage of life, from childhood to adulthood to the retirement years. That information needs to be clear, simple, and unbiased. And that we need to be inclusive. We need to address the needs, the diverse needs of Canadians. And that we need to meet Canadians where they're already at, in the school, in workplace, in the communities, and during critical life events like leaving home or having a family or retiring. The national strategy identified three big goals to help Canadians. The three goals are manage money and debt wisely, plan and save for your financial future, and prevent and protect against fraud and financial abuse. Now that we have this strategy, we'll continue to move forward collaboratively with clear actions to advance it go its goals and its vision. Since its inception, FCEC has worked hard to develop a number of important tools to provide organizations and Canadians with useful information to assess their financial literacy and enhance it. To that end, an important tool is a self-assessment quiz. So the tool, the self-assessment quiz, is also linked to the Canadian Financial Literacy Database. It, it builds on the success of many of us in the field. It allows those of us working in financial literacy to share resources, and it provides an entry point for those interested in improving their financial literacy. The quiz and database are linked so that when you take the quiz or help a client take the quiz, you'll be directed to resources within the database that best meet the needs revealed in the results of the quiz. For example, if you answer the quiz that you don't have a budget, you'll be directed to budgeting tools within the database. It's a one-stop shop source for information that ranges from how to open up a bank account, access government benefits, to how to budget, save, and protect yourself from fraud. It's also a place where organizations can showcase resources or events where you can draw attention to all the excellent work that you do. This year, we're making an improvement to the database with two new features. The first will help organizations like yourselves identi <coughs> identify sources of funding for their financial literacy initiatives. We currently have four funding partners featured in the database, but we'll be doing a lot more to dig up new sources of information uh, that we can add. And I understand from Liz there are many funders in the room, so please uh, pay attention. There's a new tool for you to feature your funding. The second feature is organizations will be able to post uh, opportunities for community-based volunteers to engage in your work. These two enhancements will make the database more useful to community groups and nonprofit organizations looking for funding or volunteers so they can deliver, continue to deliver the great work that they do. We launched the database last November during Financial Literacy Month, and I'm happy to report that we now have over 1,200 resources in the database by more than 120 organizations. That's amazing. By the end of Financial Literacy Month, let's see if we can make it grow with even more unique programs. Our goal is definitely to reduce duplication of effort. So if one organization has a great resource, let's use it and turn our attention to another priority. There's so much work for us all to do when it comes to financial literacy. So when you go back to work, see what resources you can contribute to the database this month. That's my Financial Literacy Month challenge to all of you, helping to improve financial literacy for Canadians. So looking back on recent years, we can see a lot of work, good work has been done. More recently, in 2014, we fielded the Canadian Financial Capability Survey. It was first conducted in 2009, and Jennifer Robson uh, mentioned and Liz pointed to some of that information today. So the preliminary results that you've seen show that there's some slight improvement in some areas over the past five years, but we still have a lot of work to do. So let me outline a couple of areas for improvement. We see that less than half of Canadians have a budget, and even less for low-income Canadians. We know that having a budget is critical because more than 90% of people who have a budget stick within it nearly all of the time. And this is a pattern that holds across all income levels and all age groups. The simple fact of creating and following a budget can help millions of Canadians to manage their money which makes budgeting tools a really effective way of changing behavior.
We also see that one third of Canadian adults, especially those under the age of 35, aren't preparing for retirement, either on their own or through, for example, workplace pensions. That could be either because they don't exist or they're just not taking advantage of them. Only 40% of Canadians say they know how much they need to retire. And this is much lower when it comes to low-income Canadians. But as Liz mentioned this morning, maybe what we need to focus on first and foremost is the rainy day fund. The results of an objective assessment of financial knowledge, 14 questions, we found that only nine uh, questions were being answered correctly by the majority of Canadians. So yes, we have a lot of work to do, which is why the next steps are so important. We need to continue putting people on the way to changing their lives so that they feel empowered, so their financial well-being is secure. That's a huge task. And how, how will we know what, that we're on the right track? Well, one measure will be greater number of effective financial training and education programs, more collaborative partnerships, and a greater number of workshops and seminars with more participants, as well as a growing number of contributors and users to the Canadian Financial Literacy Database. After all, the more we can connect people to the services and resources that they need, the closer we'll come to our goal of empowering people through financial literacy, the closer we come to aligning for impact. Between the strategy, the database, and all the great work that you do, we are making progress in engaging more Canadians. We have come a long way since the first Financial Literacy Month five years ago. But when we look at the research, some of which Liz and I presented today, we have much more to do. I know that we'll have many opportunities in the future to compare notes again on best practices, to collaborate further, and to continue to inspire each other in our work. The theme of Financial Literacy Month this year is Count Me In. Let me thank you once again for all the hard work that you do. And I encourage you to keep putting the financial well-being of Canadians front and centre through the activities, the initiatives that you're undertaking to strengthen the financial well-being of Canadians and particularly those in our vulnerable populations. The whole of our efforts is much greater than the sum of one. Let's all keep up the good work. Let's all count ourselves in. Thank you very much.